Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the Bricks Builder query loop and how to loop through your WordPress categories. On this website, I am working on blog posts, tags, categories, because it's an affiliate slash news template or theme, and I need to loop through these categories to give the user a really good launching off point to go into these different category types and category archives. Okay, so let's dive into the builder and see how to accomplish the loop on the category and then also the image associated with the category because that was a little tricky to figure out, but I'm gonna show you how I did it in this example. You don't need an another plugin, you don't need any code snippets, just WordPress core and Bricks Builder core. All right, let's dive in. Inside the builder now, we're gonna set up the structure panel and add our classes. So what I want you to do is add a section and then give it a class by coming over to this new class GUI here and type in category. And we're gonna use a BIM naming convention. So everything is gonna be category double underscore and then the element name you'll see here in just a second. And inside that section, add a container. And we're gonna call this class category double underscore wrap. And inside the container, add a heading. This will be category double underscore heading. And you can name these whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Whatever your convention is will work just fine. It's just better to have a class. Underneath that heading, inside the container, we're gonna add another block here called category grid for the class, category double underscore grid. And this is gonna control our four column grid using CSS grid. And then inside the grid, we're gonna have our individual cards. So add another block and call this category double underscore card. And inside that card, add an image and a heading and your classes are gonna be double underscore card image and double underscore card heading. So section, container, heading, block, block, image, heading. That's your structure, pretty simple. Okay, let's make it start looking how it's supposed to. So I'm gonna to come to the category grid block the category grid, select my class, go to content tab, go to display and choose grid. And now we are going to say, we want this to be a four column grid. So you could say one FR, one FR, one FR, one FR, and that will be a four column grid. If you don't see the grid markers, click out and then click back in and they should pop up. But that's a lot of typing. So instead, I'm just gonna say repeat, open parentheses, four comma one FR. And I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard. Let's go down to the tablet. I'm gonna paste, we're gonna do two column grid. So instead of four, I'm just gonna paste in a two. Then on the mobile portrait or the mobile view, the smallest breakpoint, we're just gonna say one FR for one column. Perfect. So I've got my screen zoomed in, and even though we're on desktop, it looks like two column grid, but if I zoom out, you'll start to see it come into view how we want it. Let's add a little gap as well. So I'm gonna do a variable var double dash space S or if you don't have a framework and you're just putting in pixels, something like 25 pixels, 20 pixels, something like that. But I'm gonna use this variable I have for my spacing. Click save. So that we can better style our cards, we should turn the query loop on to see what we're working with. And we're gonna set the query loop up on the card and general rule of thumb, when you're setting up query loops, you wanna turn it on to the thing that you wanna loop over and over and over again. In our case, we wanna loop the card. 
so that we can have all the category types for each card here. So we're gonna turn it on the card. I make the mistake sometimes of turning it on on the parent wrapper, which is the grid, but then we just loop the grid over and over and we don't wanna do that. So let's just loop the thing that we wanna show over and over again for however many items we have in that loop. So select the category loop card and then click use query loop. And then it's gonna bring in all this uh, data here because it's set up for posts. And we don't wanna use posts, we wanna use categories. So go to the query loop item here to open up the settings. And instead of posts, we're gonna select terms and that's gonna bring in all your terms. So your tags and your categories, but we don't want that. We just want categories. Because if you leave this off, you're going to have tags and categories. So you could add your tags in like that, or just have what we're going to work with here, which is our categories. Click Save. So now you can see we've got four categories in our database. Let's go check that out real quick. Let's go to Posts, Categories, and you'll see I've got one, two, three, four. And we're not going to show uncategorized because uh, we don't really use that one there. So now we've got these nice cards here. So let's take it a step further and start adding our dynamic data so that everything is set up before we start styling these cards. So let's go down to our heading. And we don't want it to say heading. So let's delete that. Select the lightning bolt and go to your terms by typing in term, and that'll filter all the things we can uh, show dynamic data for our terms. So we're gonna use term name. And you'll see all the term names kind of pop in uh, how we had it set up uh, in our category types. And the last thing we need to do is set our link to, to dynamic data. And then we want to select the term URL, which all you do is type term again, and then you'll see all these different options here. And you want term archive URL, which is term underscore URL in the tag here. Click save. So let's look at that on the front end here. And you'll see now when we hover over this, we've got the category and then the slug. So if we click it, it's gonna take us to that archive. I've already got some styles set up on this archive here. You can go see the how to. So that way you know it's working properly. Let's come back to the builder. If you set this to term slug, it's not gonna work. It needs to be term URL. So don't make that mistake. Make sure it's term URL here for the link. Okay, that's it. Looking good. So how do we get the image to come in? Because categories don't have a default feature image. So what I've done for this project Let's go back to the WordPress admin and go to the media. So I've got all these images here. So if you click on one, you can see this copy URL to clipboard. So you can take the URL of that image. And then with this kind of, call it a little bit of hacky, hacky uh, method here, I'm going to go to my categories and edit one and just paste the link of your image into the description. WordPress gives us this box and we could use it to type something like a description of this is the best products, but I'm gonna use this a little bit differently to store a feature image so that we can have a nice image for our card. And with bricks, we can call this description with dynamic data, which is nice, and it's gonna bring this link in. So just go to each one of your categories click edit and then paste the image in by going to your media, select it, copy to clipboard, close it down, go back to your categories, edit, paste it right in right there. 
and hit update. That's all you need to do. So we're going to use the description field to store a feature image for the category. You could use custom field plugins, you could write a custom snippet, or you could download and pay for a plugin that will allow feature image on category. But why do that when you can do this for free? I'm trying to save you some money here, folks. So that's what we're doing. All right, let's get back to it. So let's go back to the builder and then go to image and then select dynamic data. If we were to select an image and just say this one right here, it's going to show that same image for the entire loop. We don't want to do that. So let's delete that. Let's go to select dynamic data, type in terms, and boom, right there, term description. Let's go. So now we can pull in that link that we hard coded into our categories and bring those in. And this will make for a nice user experience for your users to have a place where they can go and look at. Let's just look at the home page for this site right here. Like let's jump off into each one of these categories for this type of layout. And that's what we're doing here by using that term description, which is just storing the URL to go fetch that image done. Now you're, we're pretty much done except for styling. So we can make this look better, but that's all I've really done to get this query loop set up and to bring in that dynamic data for the feature image. And we'll cover it all one more time at the very end of the video. All right, so let's get to styling so that these things don't look so bad. The first thing I see when I'm looking at this layout is that the heading is ginormous. It's way too big. So let's click on the heading. Let's click on the class, go to style, typography. And then I've got a variable here called font dash H5. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Click save. So that looks okay. Um, I can't really see my card, so I'm going to add some box shadow to the card. So I'm going to click on the individual card, go to the class and let's go to border box shadow. Let's do a box shadow of blur 15 spread five. And then you can just drop this lightness down to black and then turn the transparency down to something like 0 0.1. I think that looks pretty good. Let's head up to the border and add some border radius. You could do something like 15 pixels all the way around. I'm going to use a variable and I'm going to use my extra small variable and click the link button to put them on all the input boxes here. One thing I do notice is that my image here is still a square. So to fix that, we need to turn the overflow to hidden. So I will go up to the search settings, click it, type in overflow, and it will pop this overflow layout and type hidden and then you'll see now my whole card has nice rounded edges because the image is kind of overflowing outside of that card so that will stop that from happening and hit save all right that's looking pretty good next i think my heading here should be centered in this space and this is where it gets a little bit tricky so let's go over to heading clear out our search and then make sure we have our class selected and go into layout. And this is a neat little trick when you're using this type of layout where we've got the image and the heading wrapped in a single block. But we want it in the middle here. We don't want it in the top left, we want it in the middle. So let's go down to the miscellaneous, which is kind of at the bottom of the layout. So scroll down. And let's turn this display flex. And then under your flex controls that come up now, you'll see direction. Let's do stretch. And that's going to bring this all the way across. Then we're going to come down to flex grow 
and change that to one. And that's gonna make it go all the way down and set flex shrink to zero. That way this box is gonna be as big as everything on that row. So if we come down, you'll see that everything on this row is the same size, everything on this is the same size, and that's just how it's gonna look. So if this text breaks over, this one's gonna get a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can show that. Uh, 500, there we go. So when we get to this width and this text breaks over, you'll see that this space is still the same size, but it's not centered. So let's go fix that. So let's go back up to desktop. And then in our flex controls, we can center, center. And then we can go to the typography settings and center it one more time for that one uh, longer text. Okay, so that was kind of a really hard thing to do. It's hard for me to figure out. So let's talk about it a little bit. We've got our layout set to Flexbox, which brings us up some new controls here, and we're gonna stretch everything out. So if we were to align everything to the start, well, that doesn't look very good. So we're gonna use stretch to bring everything out. And then we're gonna align everything center and then set flex grow to one. If it's set to zero, it won't grow to the biggest size that is on this row. So this text being broken over here causes the cards to grow, but we want all of them to grow equally. So we'll set it to flex grow one and flex shrink zero. And then for good measure, we said typography, text align, center. You could align it that way, that way, that way. But since we want it centered up, because if, if this text was to break over, it would look just like this one. Wow, that was hard. Okay, moving on. I think that's just about everything. Maybe we should add just a little bit of padding to the heading. Maybe. Let's do extra small. That'll give it a little bit more size. You could do something like 10 pixels. And then let's look at it on the front end. I think it's looking pretty good. So you'll see when this text breaks that these break as well. And then it just starts breaking over into these nice cards here. And then on mobile, boom. I think the tutorial is done. <laughs> I hope so. This has been a hard one. Okay, anything else? Let's 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 look at what we've done. The hardest part was the query loop. So we set the query on the card to use terms and categories, terms and categories. And then on the image, we're using the term description dynamic data to pull in that, that link we put inside our category. So each one of these categories has a description and a link, awesome. And you don't have to use your whole link, you can just use starting at the WP content or wherever you have your uh, images. I haven't tested this with a CDN, so if you're using a CDN, it should work, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how that's gonna react with the CDN, so we'll have to test that out later. But if you're not using a CDN and you're just linking to these things, I'm pretty sure this is gonna work out for you, no problem. I'm, I've got it on this site and it's live, so looking pretty good to me. Then on the heading, we use the term name 
for dynamic data on the on the heading to bring in whatever we called that tag and then we're going to link that to dynamic data term URL. So that's it. That's how you can bring in your product categories and use that in a query loop with this nice card feature image. Yeah. So if this is something you like, if this is the type of content you're interested, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on the notifications because this is what I'm usually working on. And when I come across something in my own projects that I think will help, I'm going to post it up for everybody to see and uh, start sharing this uh, information. So I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. See you later.